Right. Up. Here we right. go. And there you go. It looks like he's made a slight a few oh yeah. yeah. A few. Quite a few changes, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we see Nick Bingham playing as Jeffrey with the uh, Magikarp, Kartana, Porygon 2, Arc9, Tapu Koko and Gigalith. And Shoman Army has the Drift Blim, the Snorlax, Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Garchomp and Cell Steeler. Yeah, so a similar sort of style from Shomon. He has the like good trick room options with Snorlax, but he still has the Lele and Drift Limb core. Yeah, the Lele. It seems like he substituted the Magnezone for like the Tapu Koko Celesteela. Maybe because it's a bit more reliable in like a long tournament like this? Yeah, I think that's a fair call. Uh, the guy can be rotation, yeah, with a lot shorter format, playing you know, high standard players. I think, yeah, for a long tournament like this, it's definitely a safer option. Yeah, so what do you think about this match? Um, I think trick room for Bingham. Uh, for Jeffrey there <laughs> will be an option. I think the Magic Carp probably won't get used. Maybe. Probably won't get you used. Probably not. Um, like a Z splash or something like that. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I think uh, Snorlax on Shoma's side is like a really common tech nowadays for Trick Room matchups. So yeah. even against the Gigalith, while Gigalith is slower than Snorlax, if Snorlax gets a curse up, it does threaten it quite a bit and it is slower. Yeah, exactly right. It also has access to high loss power, which hits Gigalith yeah, for a clean two hit curl and most. Uh, yeah, he was like that. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's just really dependent on if Snorlax can get up a curse before Gigalith gets in and starts doing damage. Yeah, exactly. Because right. um, so, if it is like a rock, Rockinium Z Gigalith, it does do like a lot of damage to Snorlax right off the bat. Yeah, so we'll see how Shomo approaches this. Looked like Shomo pretty close to the timer there, so hopefully he got his Pokemon locked in. Yeah. As he wanted to. So uh, like a Lele Driftlim lead is sort of what you expect from this yeah. team, but from given the P2 Gigalith, I'm not sure Shomo will come out with that. It'd be interesting to see what happens game yeah. one. Mm. Shomo also has like a really bulky Garchomp, so uh, yeah. or typically uses it at least. We do see that hit the field. Yeah, here um, we go. The Coco Chomp lead, yeah. quite offensive, uh, offering lots of pressure. Two. Uh, not not probably going to from Bingham. Mm. <laughs> not a bad lead from Bingham here. Yeah, um, I don't think so. I think intimidating the Garchomp is quite nice. You do threaten it with Ice Beam as well, but as we said, because he typically runs a, quite a bulky arc I think it's likely that uh, it will yeah. survive an ice beam, yeah, so you'll need more than just that. So we see what he gets here, the special attack boost. Yeah, okay, so that changes yeah. things completely. Yeah, that's true. But there is also the option with Tapu Koko of something like a taunt or a sky drop onto yeah. Porygon 2, which could let Garchomp set up a free sword stance and then KO it the following yeah, turn. Yeah, exactly right. Um, we'll have to see what happens. I think Bing's best play here. It's probably just to go straight for that trick room. I think something like switch into Gigalith and trick room is like fairly expected on Bingham's part, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Shoma plays around it, because while Arcanine can threaten Tapu Koko, uh, the Garchomp obviously threatens it so much at the moment, that I'm not sure you want to have it out here. Yeah, it's a difficult decision. Like, you can't exactly switch into Gigalith, like so yeah. Garchomp, you know. Where it's probably going to take rage. Where it's probably yeah. having to take rage. It's going to be a bit cold after the Gigalith switch. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, Bingham's got some choices to make here. I suppose it's yeah. to play, yeah. So Koko goes for the Bolt Switch here. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting, this means Garchomp is under a lot of pressure here. Yeah. Um, let's we'll see how we go. We may see a Tech Rage into the Porygon. I'd probably Tech Rage into one, maybe. I think that's an option. I think getting in Snorlax here is a really good call. Yeah, because I'm even if he does get up Trick Room, then like, you're in a yeah. great position. Yeah, the Tech Rate is coming off. Yeah. We'll see who it targets down. It could be either of them. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the Porygon. I think it's probably... I think, play, really. given Bingham's team, it could be interesting to just take out the Arcanine here because you do have a Celesteela in the back, and yeah, that means Bingham would have to rely on Coco in a matchup where he should be bringing the Trick Room. Yeah. So Celesteela could be in a much better position after this. Yeah, I think if yeah, the K went to the Arcanine, it yeah. leads you to think he has a steel type out back there, wants to yeah, just remove the threat to it completely, let See. it set up. And Porygon 2 does go for the Ice Beam, which should pick up the knockout here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah clean out okay. I guess yeah. it's a pretty even turn from Trading both sides, bonds, but I yeah. think I think because Snorlax is on the field and Snorlax really is such a big threat in this format, oh, I think Shroom is still in a much better yeah, position. Yeah, I think is coming on top of that turn. Like, Snorlax threatens whatever switches in here. Yeah. Go for curses. I think Bingham's answers to Snorlax are like relatively limited as well. Mm. Yeah, I don't think his team's 100% prepared for it. Yeah. Magikarp might come out, you never know. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Mm. So Tapu Koko comes back out, which is relatively good because Trick Room wasn't set up, so it can just Volt Switch out if it gets a matchup it doesn't like. Yeah, yeah I think so Kartana does come in. Judging by the damage onto that Porygon, like, that's probably true. Uh, I don't know if I call it as choice decks or not. Oh, it's definitely an option. Like, that's, that's a lot of damage, that's yeah. true. Um, and that would probably mean it would run HP Fire, yeah, which would threaten Kartana lots. Yeah, we don't know what item the Kartana has, but... It's Sash, yeah, that's going to definitely influence. Yeah. Again, we'll see what happens here. Kartana does definitely help the 
slow at match up. Yeah, 100%. Like, being able to hit through the defense boosters with Sacred Sword. If he's running Curse, if not, you know, it's super effective damage. It's... Yeah, we'll see what Bartonic goes for though. Mm. Interesting turn here. Taunt also still an option. We don't know what Coco's move is, so yeah. you know. I think that's like one of the big things that makes Coco so strong is how yeah. like unpredictable it can be. And the exactly. utility it gets is a little bit varied. You do have things like Taunt and Sky Drop, but like they can really win you a game in like one turn if it goes well. Okay, so we see the Bob switch out. Into the Cartana. Tremendous damage. Yeah. It's mental. Switches back in. Right. Yeah, so let's just look at it. be a good switch in here. Probably win the game. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, come then. I think. There you go. And this makes sense because I think that's why like eliminating the Arcanine is such yeah, a big deal. I would be. I'm pretty certain that Gigalith would be in the back of the first bit. Yeah, big and calls. Still Ooh. switching perhaps. Oh, still a lot of damage. Switching. The frustration on the Kartana. Oh, oh, and it survived. does hang on. Okay. Wow. It did try to go for a substitute though that turn and couldn't quite pull it off because yeah. of the Coco damage. That's an um, interesting turn though. I think um, mm, I think having Celesteel and Snorlax is still really safe for doing it because Snorlax isn't threatened enough that it has to yeah. start playing defensively. Like, yeah, that's right. He threatens a knockout on the Kartana here. And having Coco in the back as well threatens huge damage and yeah. like, instantly takes out the Kartana. Yeah, exactly right. The Kartana is... Yeah. It's a wet paper bag at the moment. It's got a crumb thing. Yeah. Five bench. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have <laughs> huge chances to take this game over. Yeah, that's right. We will see it though. Bleach Seed is an option. I, I think Cell Seal is probably going to protect here. Mm, potentially, I think so. Uh, maybe. Or we can see a switch into Coco as well. Take that Thunderbolt. I think Shoma is just in a really good position here. It's really hard to punish him because both of his Pokemon are so defensive. Like, yeah, that's even right. if Cell Steel goes down, I don't think it's a bad spot for him to be in at all. Yeah. Snorlax has such a good matchup. Now the Katana is down and Coco. Okay, so the combat comes out So Bingham does bring Coco here. I guess being quite wary of the Cell Steel match. Up, but that makes his Snorlax answer so limited at the moment. Oh, and if he cops a double target here, Coco's just going to drop and that's game. Yeah. Porygon 2 does take out the Celesteel here, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so Bingham is trading Pokemon, but because Shoman has this matchup like so strong, it's really rough for him to continue. I guess also for the Stockpile. Yeah, we've heard about this a bit today. There's been some rumors going around of Stockpile Billy Drum Snorlax being run, that only has like a frustration or return as its attacking move. Um, so that could be an option here from Shomon, but it yes. could just be like a more defensive spread, I suppose. But... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Coco comes back out. Um, yeah, Shomon's in a phenomenal position here, yeah, really. He threatens KOs on the Coco, and Kartana can't switch in on him. And that yeah. just gives Lax free reign to do whatever it wants. I think he just, yeah, Dazzling Beams here. And yeah, continues stockpiling. He can go for the Belly Drum if he's running that, if he wants to. Uh, yeah. It's going to be hard for Bingham to close this one out, I think. Right, we'll see his Zebra oh, coming out here. That's the uh, Twinkle Tackle coming yeah. out. Yeah. This could KO Shoma's type of Yeah, depending on how it's invested. I do think that looks like Specs damage though, so you do have free range to like run a lot more defense and like HP on that spread, so maybe this won't KO, but we'll have to see. We do also see that Bingham's Coco is faster, which is possibly a speed type. Okay, it hangs know. on. Yeah, it, that's does, huge, it yeah. does hang on there. Okay. That's really good. Yeah, I think yeah. that's... Coco goes down to Dazzling Gleam. I don't think there's any like better way Bingham could have dealt with that situation. Cause no, I think, yeah, he played to his out. Like, may have been a mineral, potentially. Because he's been trading Pokemon so much, if that had gotten the KO, that might have actually won him the game. Yeah, it would have been a lot closer. Like, that frustration yeah. just, yeah, melt away that Snorlax. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even then, it's still 1v1 Snorlax P2. I think Snorlax closes it out. But... Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Judging by the substitute on that Cartana, it's probably a scope lens set as well. Yeah. So if Coco were to go down there, um, Bingham's Coco would still be alive, or Porygon 2 would have a lot more health, and they might be able to clinch out this matchup. But the stockpiles are huge. Okay, so kind of detects. Yeah. Interesting play. I would expect just a T-Bolt going in or an Ice Beam. No, he just goes for the recover. I guess trying to take advantage of it. But... Yeah. I, I would expect him to try go for some sort of status with either Ice Beam or Thunderbolt here, to be honest, because I don't think there's any way that he wins without it. Yeah, I guess we'll play by being in there. Mm, I suppose. Protecting. Yeah, if he gets like a solid Leaf Blade crit and he had Thunderbolt at the previous turn, maybe he had outs to this, but yeah, probably not once. given the Figgy Berry. We'll see what happens. Expected like. Figgy Berry. Yeah, I just think it's not like Figgy Berry. Yeah. Katana. Yeah. It's going to get some nice damage off second, so we'll see how much this does. Ignoring the defense. It's a nice calc, though. 50%. Like, yeah. Perfect. Crocking that berry. Going to heal it right back up. Yeah. Pretty much full HP. I think Katana drops here. And yeah. Bingham. I don't think Bingham has a lot of outs to this. Except, uh, we, yeah, there you go. Potential freeze, yeah. yeah. So you should have done this last Bingham's turn as well, in my opinion. Fingers, because yeah. the freeze is the only way you can get out of you this. You're doubling your odds that turn. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Katana drops, and... 
We have seen Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. Yeah. Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. I think a Toxic is impossible at this point. I, I don't think it is Toxic, yeah. yeah. I think Glass is definitely true. Judging by the Google Thunderbolt. It does look like he's uh, willing to play out this matchup, hoping for the... Uh, for the freeze. Um, <laughs> the freeze, yeah. We'll see how much spare time he has in his hands. Yeah. But this time as well is just generally valuable because you can help plan up the matchup for like the next two games. Okay, so he is going for the ice beam, doesn't get a freeze. Snorlax gets up for a cycle. So, uh. The cycle comes up, yeah. Not a lot that can be done, really. Yeah, I think. I mean, Bingham can be, like, if he chooses to play out, he definitely has that 10% chance. And, I suppose so. You know, freeze is still a 50 Porygon 2 did also get the special, special attack raise, so it's not as slow as it would be otherwise, I suppose. Yeah, but, uh, I mean. I think the odds are real. Yeah, it's really are, not in Bingham's favor. Yeah. against Bingham here. Yeah. Like, there's an out, but I don't think it's worth his time trying to take it. Okay. So with uh, the next games coming up, I think it's pretty safe to say that Shoma's got this in the bag, but uh, how do you think Bingham could approach this to get a different result next time? I mean, maybe the Giggly is worth bringing. It is threatened heavily by the Chomp and the Celesteela, but setting Trick Room up, like with P2, you can deal with the Chomp with the Ice Beam. If he has that potential Rock Z, that's going to definitely do a lot to the Celesteela there as well. So Yeah, it's also important to note that because there's stockpile on Snorlax, it won't be cursed, so Gigalith will definitely be the p slowest Pokemon in yeah, the group. Yeah, that's right. So it, it is... Uh, but Shoma did play really well this game around like the possibility of Gigalith being there, because he had Snorlax in before Gigalith had hit yeah, the field. Yeah, that's right. So he was already, you know, boosting up already to take those attacks. Yeah. Snorlax is recycling again. Credit Card Game Masters! Credit Card Game Masters, that is time! Yeah, three turns. Time plus three. You might see the time. village arm come out here if he has it. He may just choose to, you know, not reveal the information. I think not revealing it is probably the play to make, because even if yeah. Porygon 2 does get the freeze, it will take a long time. Oh, it's not like that. Okay, no, he does go for the And there you go, belly drum. Belly drum comes out. Belly drum stuff. Man. It's going to maximize that Snorlax in the attack. It's going to be able to take the clinker on this Porygon. <laughs> it also does mean that Snorlax doesn't have high horsepower to hit this Giglet, so it will need to cut its own HP in future matches if it does want to get up any damage against it. Yeah, that's a risk. It's not a risky play, but it definitely gives that option. It gives the window of opportunity for Giglet to yeah, really do some solid damage on the end. Yeah, but in the same way that they had this match, I think Shoma having Celestealer and Snorlax really forces Bingham to bring like an auto assortment of Pokemon. Yeah, I think... Because he does want to bring both Coco and Arcanine to deal with the Celestealer, yeah. uh, but if you do that, you sort of sacrifice a Trick Room matchup a little bit. Yeah, which kind of makes things a bit difficult. Um, so again, one goes to Shoma there. Uh, yeah, really good play from him. They did just trade Mons very often, but Shoma was always in a little bit of a better position because yeah. he did have those two really strong win condition Pokemon to save for the end of the match. Yeah, he always seemed to turn ahead in the game. Um, if that Twinkle Tackle did pick up the Coco, it I think know, would have changed the course of the game a fair bit. So, yeah, um, I think there's more chances for him to win, definitely. Maybe I mean, most likely he did double target the Tabu Coco. Yeah, I, 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 you'd hope so. But between like uh, a smart strike doing maybe a little bit over fifty percent, like getting RNG on the electric terrain plus one like thunderbolt roll yeah, is that's like, right. like there are outs there's like conceivably a lot more outs for Bingham though. Yeah. You know, Bingham, I think Shoma was still in quite a good position though. Yeah. So Bingham dropped in his four, he thinks he's found the answer. Yeah, found the answer for the game through pretty early on. So what do you think? What do you think about the Cartana vs. Gigalith argument? Because I think bringing Coco and Arcanine is quite quite important. Um, yeah, so I, I think the last slot should match. really be down to Cartana and Gigalith. The, yeah, I think it's hard to ignore. I mean, for me personally, I'd be bringing in Gigalith. Just because it, yeah, like it threatens a lot more damage than Cartana does. If it is holding the Roxy. If it is holding the Roxy, yeah. Um, if not, it's still a still a matchup isn't very good. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I guess it's an interesting idea. Maybe Magikarp might make an appearance. Yeah. You know? Also important is that uh, Volt Switch from Tapu Koko put Cartana out of range for substitute. So yeah, that's definitely like something big to be aware of. Like, yeah. You can't just set up a sub in front of that Cartana or anything like that. He's going to have to yeah. go for some damage. Uh, some time here to count down. What do you think Shoma leads? Yeah. I think Shoma should definitely still bring Snorlax and Celesteel. 100%, yeah. Um, I think bringing both of them is fine, because they cover each other's weaknesses fairly yeah, well as well. Yeah, the ground switch in, like, you know, yeah. you don't mind. Coco would be Snorlax 1v1, you'd, you'd think Snorlax would have that. Yeah, you'd pile. think so. I think Fulham's Coco is quite valuable here, though, because it has yeah, Twinkle Tackle, so yeah, from turn 1 it can really yeah. threaten a lot of damage. I think it, I think it probably leaves Coco here. I think, like, Coco Porygon 2 is probably a good adjustment. Yeah, maybe Coco Arcan also. Either of those. Get the intimate on that shot. I just think he has to play really well to make sure he can deal with, like, the Celesteel on the Snorlax. Oh, definitely. I mean, like, facing off against Shoma Phenomenal, you're going to have to play well to have any chance of 
Yeah, I've just taken a game from him, so we'll see what happens. Same leads from Shona here. Coco Tapu Coco Coco comes out. Yeah, it's all lead, I guess. And the Tapu Coco and the Porygon 2 do come out. Okay, yeah. that's not too bad. Alright, so... Immediately, you know, that guy starts thinking of switching out. Yeah, I think so, because, uh, I mean, Coco threatens one-hit knockouts on both of these Pokemon, I'd assume. Um, I would I would probably think that the roll on Coco was uh, like questionable on if it would KO or not. Yeah. Uh, and even so, like Porygon 2 can still set up Trick Room here if he it thinks it's valid. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Bolt switch from Tapu Coco into the Snorlax slot yeah. from uh, from Shona. Shona's also got to be careful. He can't just uh, switch that Garchomp out because that's what Vegan's probably anticipating. So if you know Thunderbolts, uh, Twinkle Attack, sorry, and Thunderbolts that slot. Yeah. That'll do some, you know, nice damage to Cell Steel. Yeah, absolutely. Waste the Z move, but you know, you you drop the Cell Steel, you got your Coco out, you still have P2. Yeah, for sure. I would probably it's, anticipate Garchomp to protect. I don't think there are enough safe switches, yeah, I think and Garchomp is really like yeah, protect quite important. Here, I think it's probably pretty good. Yeah. What's what's the, my main issue with this is that I feel like Bingham's ways to deal with Snorlax are far too slow. Yeah. Uh, like it requires too much setup. Okay, so he, he goes for the Volt Switch on the opposing yeah, type of Coco. Yeah, I suppose so. If you can bring in Gigalith here, yeah, uh, that'll be really strong. Uh, we haven't seen Coco's full set or item yet, so no, we have. the taunt's still an option. But, I suppose uh, yeah, so, bring yeah. Gigalith, well played. I think that's what you have to do here. Yeah, I agree. I think this is his best up. answer to show yeah, him a bolt switching into something else. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there yeah, you go. Much. And he should hit the P2. Yeah. Yeah, he hits P2, yeah. That's a lot of damage. It must be specs. Okay, so the guard shot there protecting, kind of forced to protect. Uh, yeah. You don't want to drop it, let Choco go turn one. Yeah, absolutely. You can't do much about that. Big is, yeah, made the read. Got in a better position. What's the different is I don't think uh, Porygon 2 has the special attack boost this game. Yeah, so that changes a little bit. Yeah, and he does set up the trick room, which is nice. Um, yeah, okay. Huh, it's an interesting turn, because you could ignore the Garchomp almost, and if you hit Lax into range just before it's berry, a Rock-type Z-move probably would take it out before yeah. the berry activates. I can see Ice Beam Rock Slide coming out here. I think that should mm. jump into Ice Beam Rage, that chip damage. Uh, yeah, and it does, could just flinch the Snorlax. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're fishing for flinches, you're getting good like, uh, chip damage on any switch in, so I think... That's probably Bingham's optimal play. I suppose so, unless you were to like protect Gigalith and hit the Snorlax, but doing that really leaves Porygon 2 open yeah, to being you, killed. You've got to, I think you have to make the most of these trick room turns and just apply as much press as you can to Shoma here. Yeah. This lead from Shoma is really strong because with the specs and the tech rage from Garchomp, you can just, just like delete the uh, Porygon 2 straight away. Yeah, so we'll see if he saves that for game 3. Bingham has played this like very well though. Yeah, not so I think, I think the best he could have almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's done best he can here. We'll have to see how it plays out. I think Snorlax is just really threatening here. Okay, okay, so yeah, he so switches out the Garchomp. Tapu Lele comes in. Uh, Tapu Lele will take a lot from this Rock Slide. Yeah, it's definitely going to be KO next turn. It, it's like a fighting Rock Slide out. doesn't do. I think, uh... Okay, oh, he sets up the curse. curse, wow. That's actually really strong, like, if, yeah, if Bingham absolutely. knows that, that Snorlax doesn't have half force power, like... If Snorlax belly guns here, though, that's really threatening. Yeah, like... Okay, goes oh, he's stockpiles. Yeah, no, right. fair play, though. He, he wants to boost his defense, he doesn't want to take. And I suppose bringing in Lele does help because, um, it gets rid of the terrain. Yeah, that's right, like... Uh, and Bingham, yeah, just fires the Ice Beam into the Garchomp slot. That's Bingham's a lot of damage as well. Yeah. Uh, so this okay. turn... It'd be interesting to know how much a plus one or like a neutral rock Z would do to the Snorlax because it does do a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, a base like, like 135, 135 attack set from Gigalith. From if he has Stone Edge, yeah. yeah. One a return one Porygon one. 2 would really help this matchup out a lot. Because he can pick a Lele. Here, yeah. Sadly well, not. Lax and double the Lax maybe. Is I think uh, Rock Slide again, uh, because of the flinch chance, yeah, is still it, quite a good play. It's optimal play. Like, Shoma can't do anything to stop it. Yeah. It's gonna have that... But if, if the Snorlax is, does set up a belly drum, I'm pretty sure that Bingham has really a tough time getting through it. Yeah, I mean, once that treatment runs out, Snorlax is just gonna be able to stop it. Yeah. It's definitely something he's gonna be wary of, so yeah. I'm just interested to see how this turn plays out. It's difficult. I think Rock Slide is probably the best call because Gigalith doesn't take that much from Snorlax when it doesn't have high horsepower, yeah, exactly which would right. force a Belly Drum out of Shogun. But you could take out Tapu Lele in the meantime with a Rock Slide Ice Beam. Okay, he goes for a double curse. I'm not sure. Curse again. That's Maybe predicting the protect on the Lele there. I if, suppose so, but I, I think I think it's Specs. Like I, if I was to assume anything, I'd be assuming Specs. I suppose so. You see the frustration. Frustration now. goes into Porygon too. That's well that's played. probably a good target for Bingham to be honest. 
Ice like, Beam into the Tapu Lele does a lot of damage. If he drops this uh, Porygon 2 here, Gas Drop threatens to once again. Like, yeah. Okay, it hangs on. So we'll see if Sandstorm, man, what's... I don't know, I can't do the math that quickly. I think we'll These are... take out this Porygon. One, one HP. HP, okay, that's huge right there. I think uh, Snorlax taking the sand damage is really helpful. Yeah, okay. Because now it would die to a rock type Z move. I think a rock type Z move, yeah, it's probably nearly in KO right Absolutely, there. and Snorlax Plus typically Snorlax. doesn't carry protect, so. Yeah, the Snorlax. I mean, we've seen all of its moves, yeah. yeah. It protect. Um, this is quite a good spot for Bingham, to be honest. Yeah, Bingham's Plus two Gigalith, there's nothing to laugh at. Yeah, um, like, potential is Trump, they switch on to the Snorlax if he wants to preserve that Snorlax for late game. But mm, I, I suppose I just, so. I don't know. He brings out the Tapu Lele. Okay, so I think. Yeah, okay, switches into the chomp there. Predicting the recover, I think it recovers a pretty safe play. Oh, he does go for the rock slide, so maybe he doesn't actually carry that rock type Z move. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Okay, that doesn't quite proc the variable. I think that Sandstorm will, unless it ends this turn. Frustration, Frustration does yeah. take out the Porygon, that's not that's bad. That's huge right there. Trigger will end soon as well. Yeah, that guard chomp's not for it by much. If he, he can't bring in Coco, this chomp's slower. Oh, it does get proc'd, alright. Yeah, okay, it procs it up. I thought yeah, it was going to okay. miss that for a sec. It's all seemed to just. Yeah, if Snorlax didn't strong. get knocked into range there, I think it would be a really scary position. Yeah. Something like a Stone Edge even would probably take it out. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. The momentum of the game has definitely swung back into our shows We see Kartana switching here. Um, Ooh, interesting position. Yeah, it's just Kartana gonna be does carry the Detect here because it does have Substitute, so it'll be quite... Um, like yeah, Bingham has options to play around with room how he sees fit. Yeah, definitely. I think Zub is like potential play here. Yeah, Garchomp also takes a lot from a Leaf Blade. It might KO at this point, especially with Scud Lens as an idol. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I still think if he has the Z move, he really needs to deal with the Snorlax yeah, as soon as like possible. The Snorlax, he, if it doesn't go down this turn or next turn, I think it's just going to overwhelm him. I think bringing Kartana was like Kartana and Gigalith is like a really good call here because. Knowing that Snorlax only has normal type attacking moves, yeah. these like, these two are probably his best answers to beating it. Yeah, and the fact that Snorlax can't hit them is like yeah, a huge like, deal. Yeah. And now that Lele is chipped and Garchomp is as well, it's really hard to uh, switch in safely. Yeah, we also know that uh, Shurva doesn't have the self steal with this game, so uh, he's kind of the uh, Snorlax gets a stockpile up, okay, but even then, Gigalith is already a plus two, so it's yeah, not that's a right. tremendous deal. Um, I think we'll probably see the Z tech range come out yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, we do. Okay, um, at plus two defense, like, Giggle has got very high base defense stats, so, um... Yeah. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be a KO. It's interesting how to play out. We'll I think, uh, trained, yeah. He probably doesn't hit the Kartana slot here. I don't think he can. I think, it's, I think Giggle is definitely... Shoma does, okay, yeah, he does it interesting, because Shoma famously runs like Rock Slide and Earthquake, such attacking moves on Garchomp. Yeah, that's right. So he doesn't really have a better way to hit the Kartana here, especially with Snorlax there and Lele being so low. Okay, he's going to cop the Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword, this, this nice yeah, but it won't KO. But he hasn't had the chance to get off a Recycle now, which is a huge deal, and especially as... Yeah, yes. that's really Okay, now this is really interesting here, like... Right, because Snorlax Kartana doesn't have protect. <laughs> yeah, the Kartana's yeah. threatening the Chomp and the Snorlax. And, and like, Chomp doesn't do very much to giggle it, though, either. No, not with Earthquake, so I think... Yeah, but Bingham's definitely worked himself into a decent position here. Yeah. He's, you know, whatever switch is in is going to take some big damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his Gigalith move set is like a really big factor here because yeah, I think curse. It's really if you had something like Earthquake that could take out like Garchomp and the opposing like whatever switches in on the yeah, Snorlax right, slot, yeah. it covers your options a lot more. But now he's got to make a read into if Garchomp or Snorlax stay in. Yeah, I think it's. I think if you Gigalith, you are moving last. I think the Chomp protects here and you uh, the Snorlax will target down that Kartana. Um, I think Bingham should probably just target the Garchomp this turn. Yeah, I think it's I think he needs to make like a really hard read. Oh. Okay, if the Garchomp protects, it's a bit... Uh, Oops. Yeah. Giggle Giggle does go for the Protect okay, as well. Kind of Interesting, play. if he hits the Snorlax... Oh, okay, he, he hits the Snorlax. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll play by Bingham there. Uh, getting the plus one attack. I think Coco comes in and just KOs over, but... Uh, but Gigalith is like really strong here. Yeah, Gigalith definitely like, set up. Like a plus two attack, I think a rock slide is going to drop that Coco anyway. So. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. It could have something like Heavy Slam as well, or even if it has Earthquake. Yeah, that's right. We still don't know. We've only seen Curse and Rock Slide and yeah, Protect us. The only problem is switching in Coco here. Like yeah. if it is Specs or like a choice lock item, he can't Earthquake freely. Like he's going to drop his own monster. Yeah. It's, it, it's, There's also the possibility of it being like a 50% a very Gigalith. Uh, which is something Nails ran recently in the IC. Yeah, and, um, interesting. Right? Something like that. It'd be quite interesting because at plus two defense, like it can take things quite well. So if Coco oh, were to come out and yeah. like dazzling gleam it, 
it, it, uh, it would probably period. live and then get a lot of health back and then live the subsequent Garchomp attack. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I think being in Sand also not being up is a big deal. Yeah, no special defense boost. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see the Koku come in. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. You gotta really threaten that Kartana. You can't bring in Lele and it just. You yeah. just can't do it really. You can't afford to lose the Garchomp like that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this turn's gonna be interesting. Like, if, uh, if all goes to plan, I think uh, Garchomp will probably do its best to hit this Giggle if, like. Yeah. I think he's definitely going to go break option here and check on Coco. I think Coco has to go for a move that will KO this Katana or else Shiro yeah, will probably lose the game. So Bingham needs to make a read into that because yeah, I, think I suppose he could like protect Earthquake, but even then if Garchomp goes down, the game's done. Yeah, I think Katana definitely should protect this turn. Not protecting it, it's just too risky. Like, it's your win con. Like, if, you, if that drops, Garchomp is like, yeah. This game is really filled with a lot of tight decisions on which is yeah, Like the last turn especially, but this as well. Like The Giggles goes for the double. I don't, I don't know if that's worth going for. Giggleth should go down to T Bolt as well because the, there's no Okay, it survived. Yeah, oh, and it does have down. the berry. Wow. It props that berry up. Okay, so we're going to see the potential. If only Bingham had attacked with Giggleth this time. Okay, here's the lead plate. Okay. And so the Coco. Oh, so he's making a read on the Garchomp protection. Yeah, okay, that's. Yeah, that's not too bad. We'll he see goes for an earthquake here, though. Yeah. It's the plus two Kartana now as well. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to see how much this earthquake does to Giggleth. Going yeah. for the protector really hurt him though because he, he's not going to carry the gacha on the next yeah. turn. Uh, I think, yeah. So on this set, I think you typically want to run wide guard Giggle. So even that is like yeah. probably a better option that turn. I think so. Um, yeah, the double protects just. Yeah, really. Uh, he didn't capitalize on that turn as much as he could have. If he had run wide guard as well, it protects from the oh, He brings the attack of Coco. So I think Finger has his suit up anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, psychic turn props. Uh, Oh, so we know that it's Scarf Lele now. Okay, so it's Scarf Lele now. Yeah. yeah. Alright, that's good to okay, know. Okay, that's good to know for Bingham. I think, yeah. It's a Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. Type of Coco, yeah. I think, yeah. Because he does have the Twinkle Tiger, so he must have Dazzling. Yeah, if, yeah exactly right. Um, yeah. Uh, Type of Lele is faster, but I don't think you can threaten the Coco with a one-hit knockout. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I don't even think it could really pick it up. If it does... Yeah, because you know, the Psychic Terrain's not there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure right. Bingham has got this game in the back. Yeah, I think Bingham cleaned up this game. Now, he played pretty well there. Identifying Giggle as, you know, something he needed to bring. I mean, the two 50-50 turns in the game, he made the yeah, right read. Yeah, he definitely played well. Like, yeah. setting up the curse. Really impressive. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. Cool. And he, play, he pressured Lax enough yeah. this game that even though it got stockpiles up, it didn't get a recycle, so that he could just yeah, chip exactly it down right. and then get it into range for a Yeah, I think... Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think Shrum has any outs here. I think he just... Yeah, okay, so Giggle goes for the wide guard. I don't know if it's worth revealing that. Yeah, I also, the game. I also don't think that. I don't think he, okay, the oh, last comes oh, out. Oh, he's going for the special attack. Uh, so I don't think it'll matter. I think oh. that negative. Okay, that's not oh. some fat damage. With a special attack job, I think that Garchomp might have lived. Yeah, it would have been interesting. Oh. Okay, Bingham just got that one. Taking the game of Trump. Yeah. That's, you got, you got to give him credit for that. Very well played. Yeah, well, very well done. Taking down a previous world championship, the caliber of this player. Like, <laughs> It's amazing. You know? The man, the absolute <laughs> the, madman the bringing Magic Magikarp Cup to man. nationals. <laughs> As he's been dubbed in Australia, you know. He's, he loves that one, but mm. I'd love to see it in game three, you know. I think like we said before, the addition of like Gigalith and Cartana to help show up the Lex yeah, matchup is really good. Yeah, he, and he with Sherman not bringing Celesteela this match, yeah. his answers are super limited. Yeah, so I, think, I expect to see Snorlax and Celesteela from Sherman's side yeah, next definitely, game. Definitely game three. I think Celesteela has to be more. I think Lele really did not add that much to the... No, I think Lele, yeah, really just held him back in that matchup. I, I suppose Scarf. the reasoning is that with Scarf, if you have Psychic Terrain up, you can just yeah. one-shot the Coco. Yeah, that's right. You can do a fair bit of damage, but... I don't know. Well played. Yeah, yeah well played for both sides, well. really. I think uh, Celesteel is just really quite important. Though. Yeah, Celesteel is definitely going to be good, I think. Even though he has Arcanine Coco, like... Uh, Garchomp Snorlax just deals with them well enough. Even the Coco gets nice damage off, gets Arcanine, the top of the Lele damages the Arcanine well, and the Coco so. Yeah. Even in the first game, Celestial it really didn't do much, but just the fact that you have those two like threats Yeah, just the fact that you had them on the field, it just... Yeah. Uh, yeah, seriously, like, if he has a Leech Seed, you can, you know, install that, that Giggly. I think we can absolutely rule out Driftblim from Shoma here. Yeah, I don't think Driftblim has the best I, I think Chomp Coco, Snorlax, Celesteela is probably his yeah. best player. I'd say so. I, Tapu Lele. Bingham's lead as well last game was really good. Yeah, no, he definitely And the Volt Switch well. turn one into yeah, the other 100%. Coco slot. And he yeah. played like very well that yeah, turn. Yeah, no, turn one was yeah, very well played. Bingham. Definitely a good turning point of the game. Setting Trick Room early. Yeah. I'm waiting for that Giggly to set up. It just, yeah, really utilizes it to the full potential. So, um, well played. Bingham's left in his four. Uh, but um, he's taking it. Taking his emotions, yeah, we'll see. He wants to get this right, you know.
Yeah, obviously. It doesn't want to drop another game here. Mm. I think Cartana's like better in this matchup than it would normally be, in my opinion, because yeah. I'm quite certain Garchomp will have Rock Slide and Earthquake as its only attacking moves, and we've yeah. seen that Cartana can live a Tech Rage. Yeah, so. exactly right, so I definitely think it's worth knowing. He probably has techs like uh, Hit and Power Fire on either Coco or Lele, as well as Flamethrower on Celesteela. Yeah, I'd but say so to deal with that. It does threaten, yeah, a lot of this If you can successfully get up a substitute, it might yeah, not be Yeah, successful bad. sub, like, is yeah, definitely something Beacon has to consider here. Yeah, if you, but you just Katana. need to keep in mind that you need to threaten Celesteela. Because oh, in the right, last right. match, if Katana had gotten up a substitute, that game would have been really oh, 100%, hard to play. Like, yeah. I right. think Bingham's done a very, well, a very good job. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Shom is mixing it up. He leads Lax and Coco. And uh, Bingham. Bingham sticks with the Coco. Yeah, Shom is just as well. They're leading nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think uh, either Stockpile or Belly Dome are both reasonable moves. Yeah. I think the Stockpile is a bit more worthwhile. Yeah. Like, yeah, he wants to boost his defenses. He doesn't want to take as much damage as yeah, he absolutely. Would that Gigalith. And the know, fact that uh, if Bingham gets in Gigalith, uh, like. Snorlax yeah, will already have a boost of some sort, most likely, so there's not a lot that can really be done about that. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be an interesting game, Hal. Yeah, see, if Bingham had reverted to his lead of like Arcanine, Porygon 2 from game 1, this would be a much better turn for him. So I guess Shoma called yeah, the definitely. leads like yeah, very no. well in that respect. Yeah, Shoma did also well. Bingham, going with what worked last game, so you know, that's fair enough. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, in a game like this. Again. I'd be interested to know how much Twinkle Tackle does to Tapu Koko, because yeah. uh, when it was revealed, Shoma seemed quite happy <laughs> that it lived. I don't yeah. think he was entirely expecting yeah, it either. It was, so. yeah, it'd be interesting to see if it's a roll or not. I'm not sure how much it affects the matchup if Koko does go down here. Koko drops, like, we saw how much it did to the Gigalith, so like, I think it's definitely, worth, it's definitely a threat worth taking down if you can. He goes for the Vault Switch once again. Yeah, so Bingham's, Bingham's uh, Koko is almost definitely faster, so... Yeah, that, that three speed ties in a row, it's unlikely. Yeah. They're all together possible, but yeah. it looks like Bingham definitely has the faster mm. Coco. Taking his time here. Coco's so doing so much damage to like okay. Kartana and Porygon too, though. So they're like, like Snorlax. Mm. The Dazzling into Kartana. If Dazzling's a two KO, that's good. Oh, yeah, I'll get some three KO. That's really nice. Yeah, Pro okay, that's goes for the Thunderbolt. Onto the Coco uh, slot. I don't know if I agree with that. Mm. It's, it's interesting. Solex doesn't go for a boosting move yeah. here, which is like quite surprising. Yeah, I think he does put Cartana into Dazzling Gleam Range though, which is nice. But yeah, that's that's also worth noting. Uh, I'm not as threatening as well as before. And Cartana just gets removed. Here. Unfortunately, Coco seems like it's out of range to go down to any of Porygon 2's attacks. So like yeah. a detect Ice Beam won't. Put, uh, I don't think so. It won't put Bingham in a much better position. So if Bingham were to bring back in his top of Coco, uh, even on the Dazzling Gleam and the, uh, the return that's probably going into the Kartana slot, it might just go down straight away. Yeah, but yeah. Because he is the Fairy Z, he can probably afford to run a little bit more bulk than normal. And he is faster. Okay, brings in Gigalith here. Uh, fair enough play, getting that special defense from the Sandstorm. Gonna reduce Dazzling Gleam's power here. Uh, and again, I think the Sandstorm chip on Snorlax was quite big last game. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely, it's definitely not anything to laugh at, because as long as you have it below 50%, yeah, he's going for with the Ice Beam here onto Coco. Maybe predicting a Garchomp switch in, or... I think it's more just about getting damage. Okay, Lax goes Garchomp. for the Belly Drum here. Uh, that's an interesting move. It means that, because Bingham hasn't gotten up Trick Room yet, yeah. uh, Gigalith is slower than Snorlax. <laughs> yeah. In like a really bad way. Um, yeah, I, I think a uh, Thunderbolt... Frustration is gonna take out. Uh, we'll see the Sandstorm. No. Sandstorm takes out Coco. Okay, and I'm so that changes the dynamics of the game a bit. I'm not sure that's good for Bingham. Yeah, if he brings in Garchomp here, I think that's over. Like, if Z Tech Rage onto either mod, it's gonna KO. Yeah. The Garchomp's at plus, uh, not the Garchomp, Snorlax is at plus four. Plus six. Uh, plus six, sorry, yeah, times so, um, I think Shoma's in a pretty good spot if Garchomp comes in here, even if it doesn't, like, you know, a plus yeah. four. So I'd be very surprised if Shoma didn't bring Garchomp as well. Yeah, I think Garchomp definitely miles this matchup. Um, play like Shoma, yeah. Mm. We'll see what he brings out. It'd be interesting, because P2 can't get up a Trick Room without going down to a return. Yeah, that's Gigalith right. goes down to a Tech Rage, so... Yeah, so... I think uh, Bingham's options are really limited. Yeah. Bringing in the Cartana at a later point and getting, like, a good Leaf Blade crit could, like, put him a little bit back in the game if he can get some chip damage onto the Snorlax. Um, so I think he should probably Thunderbolt the Snorlax and then hope for either a Sacred Sword or a Leaf Blade crit mm. Okay, your Gachop comes in here. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't good for Bingham. He, he doesn't have any Pokemon that can freely switch in and take a Z Tech Rage or just be immune to it. Yeah. Which is. Uh, it's not good. It's not good, no. 
especially on a team with three people from week two at ground type. So. Yeah, this is like often the, the issue that Gigalith teams have is that yeah. you have to run uh, Gigalith and then you really want to have Coco, Coco and Arc they. Arcanine are like really common Pokemon. So you have these three ground weaknesses and it's really an issue to switch around Garchomp. I mean, potentially if he wasn't running, you know, the Magic Carpa, yeah. I'd imagine it would be a immunity. He maybe has some more options. I think he was, uh, yeah, he had to. This is really good from Shoma. He sort of uh, he showcased this sort of playstyle a lot in the One Nation of Gamers tournament as well, because uh, especially against Aaron Zeng in the last few rounds, like yeah, uh, he had this like double threat thing where he could he could sword dance with Garchomp and get up a Dragon Dance, and because both of his Pokemon have so much pressure, yeah, he's really right. just free to take control of the game. Exactly and right. it's like a the exact same situation here, really. Oh, yeah, Z-Tech Ray is probably going to target down that Gigalit. Yeah. So he has Cartana and Tapu Koko in the back. Um, okay, yeah, because both of these mods should get paired. Yeah, Gigalith's gonna get dropped. Uh, P2 may get a freeze on Snorlax if he goes for it. Like, there's an I think Thunderbolt's the better call, though. Because you want the damage Yeah, you do, want, you do want to get... Yeah, and you're not gonna knock it down, probably. Yeah, ask me what is good. Yeah. Another chop. Fair that enough. That shouldn't get the KO. I don't know if chomps yeah. worth targeting down there, though. The, no, I think the chip on Snorlax is yeah, 100%. the only way you can get out of it. Because you yeah. need a crit on you Snorlax yeah, exactly. with the Cartana. And then have Porygon to be able to ice-beat the chomp later on Yeah, because having Coco being able to target Snorlax doesn't matter because neither Katana or Coco can uh, knock out the Snorlax. Yeah, okay, so you see being his last two coming now. Yeah. If it is Katana Coco, he's not in a terrible position. You know, he threatens the KO on the charm. If he does, uh, he can just freely target the Coco slot and then he will probably have Celesteela in the back in my opinion. So If he has Celesteela, I, I... Like, if he has Celesteela in the back, all he needs to do is get rid of Tapu Coco and that seems yeah. pretty dual. It seems dual, but you know, crits happen. Yeah. It does link Especially with a Snorlax. probably scope lens card. He has it, it's buried, it hasn't recycled, so that's, you know. Yeah. If he does get a crit dazzling gleam, second sword may be able to take it out. So yeah. it's definitely going to be an interesting turn here. Gotcha. Yeah, I think something like Dazzling Gleam Leaf Blade is probably the best way to do this. Uh, and just go for the Leaf Blade critical hit. Yeah, if he is running, indeed running against the Scope Lens. Because like, if you can Dazzling Gleam and get the Snorlax into range where a critical hit will take it out, I think uh, yeah. Bane can take this game. Is this whether you want to flip that coin or not? You know? <laughs> I think you have to. I don't think there are any other options. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. taking it. It doesn't make it. Yeah, I think this is the right play. As expected. Not doing it. It'd be interesting to know how much Snorlax does to Cortana as well. I guess it sets up the song. If the Snorlax recycles it, I think he just has to take out the Tapu Koko. He hits the Cortana! Alright, so this, yeah, this is interesting now. Whoa, Nelly. Yeah, well played by BM. Good call there. Um, with the Sandstorm still going, yeah, I'm not sure how many turns there are left, but if you can get like a few more turns on, a Leaf Blade Crit will probably take out Snorlax. Yeah, I'd say a little too. Oh, it's still still comes in, he's going to be threatened by that Snorlax. Yeah, I would expect it to bring him to probably oh, just Coco, try... Oh, okay, bring him to Lele. Lele. Okay, that will really seals it up, I think. Scarf yeah, Lele. I think a Scarf Dazzling Gleam wins the game here yeah, for Yeah, Coco's not in its electric terrain. Thunderbolt's power is reduced. That yeah. Kartan's going to drop. Snorlax is just, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's just going to drop that Coco out. Um, We'll see what happens here, but... I think the Lele is quite an interesting call, maybe, to be honest. Yeah, I think... With Bingham refusing to bring the Arcanine in game two, I feel like Celesteela isn't a bad Pokemon in this matchup, but obviously so Yeah, well. it's not cool. I think the Scarf Lele, you know, may add to the reason why he wants to bring that so he can yeah. bring it in last against the Coco. Yeah, absolutely, because like, so Scarf Lele in the back is really strong against this type of Coco, yeah. and, like, even Cartana matchup, because with Snorlax not having high horsepower, I think it's quite difficult for Shoma to damage Cartana. Yeah. So having, like, a faster Pokemon than it, that can do so much damage because it's not holding okay, his assault best item. Yeah. yeah. Let's see where this Coco goes. Oh, it goes to Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. yeah. So if... I still think that seals out the game, like... You just, you I mean, just, you would need really good RNG on. Yeah, like you gotta get. Side. Uh, I don't think the two times gonna pick up this chaos. Like, no, he's going for the Lele. Yeah. Surely, because if you ta if you knock out the Tapu Lele here, then Cartana has crit chances. Oh, of course, yeah, no. Yeah. See what yeah. happens. Interesting. I mean, there's also the option of a Twinkle Tackle crit onto Snorlax, maybe. Yeah, okay, goes in the Lele. Yeah, yeah, correctly. Targeting that down. I think it should pick up the chaos. Oh, potentially. Oh. Okay. No, like, no, not at all. Yeah, that's all yeah. big game here. Very well played, but you know, took game two. <laughs> he really did have uh, yeah, outs to try to take this match out as well. I think he did. But I think Shoma really just like understands how to play this matchup very well. The Tapu yeah. Lele is something that's like 
I feel like it's less effective in the majority of situations, but he's really playing around its strengths. Yeah, Keeping right. it in the back for so long, being able to override terrain and making sure you can survive yeah. an attack is really good. Yeah, that's the thing about 27 me. Terrain is such a big part to play, like, you know, boosting your attacks to, you know, take more damage and yeah, prevent status. It goes double the tech there. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to drop to the dazzling. Yeah, you're back game. Yeah. Very well played to Bingham, you know, to go really well against Bingham. Yeah. 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 Very well played. Around the fourth from the crowd. That's brilliant game. Yeah, that's round five done and dusted. Fantastic. Really well done for these guys. Yeah, 